Dear friends, welcome to your personalized podcast. Today, we dive into Google's latest Gemini models, MIT's machine learning advancements in pharmaceuticals, LinkedIn's new AI policies, OpenAI's voice mode expansion, and Alibaba's AI innovations. Additionally, we'll explore Y Combinator's cohort expansion, Ilya Sutskever's new venture, prepared Series B funding, rising European defense tech investments, and Marvel Fusion's fusion power ambitions. Today, we are excited to announce the release of two updated Gemini models, Gemini 1.5, Pro 002, and Gemini 1.5, Flash 002. These models improve upon those introduced at Google I.O. in May, offering enhanced performance for a wide range of tasks, including text, code, and multimodal applications. Developers can access these models for free via Google AI Studio and the Gemini API, and they are also available on Vertex AI for larger organizations. The new models are faster, more efficient, and show significant performance boosts, such as a approximately 7% increase on the MLU Pro benchmark and approximately 20% on math-related tasks. They also deliver shorter, more concise responses, and have seen price reductions and increased rate limits to facilitate easier, more cost-effective use. Additionally, a further improved Gemini 1.5 Flash 8 BX0 924 model is now available, offering dramatic performance enhancements. We look forward to seeing the innovative ways you will use these new capabilities. The pharmaceutical manufacturing industry faces challenges in monitoring drying mixtures, crucial for producing medications. Traditionally, either particles are counted from images, which is time-consuming and wasteful, or light scattering is used to estimate particle size distribution. Recently, MIT researchers developed a machine learning-based light scattering method that improves efficiency and accuracy in manufacturing reducing failed batches. A new method, detailed in the paper Non-Invasive Estimation of the Powder Size Distribution from a Single Speckle Image, speeds up particle size distribution estimation. This technique uses pupil engineering to reduce analysis time from 15 seconds to 0.25 seconds, offering a 60-fold improvement. It provides a low-cost, non-invasive probe for particle size, Compatible with most drying systems, this advancement could enhance manufacturing efficiency and product quality, enabling systematic study of dynamic processes. The research was a collaboration within the MIT Takeda program involving multiple MIT departments. Let's now turn our attention to the implications for user trust. LinkedIn may have trained artificial intelligence models on user data without updating its terms. LinkedIn users in the United States can opt out from data scraping for artificial intelligence training in their settings. Initially, LinkedIn did not update its privacy policy to reflect this data use, but the terms have now been updated. LinkedIn claims it uses user data for its own artificial intelligence models and potentially for models by providers like Microsoft. They collect data, including posts, language preferences, and feedback to improve LinkedIn services. To opt out, users can adjust their settings under data privacy. However, opting out will not affect past data use. The Open Rights Group has urged the United Kingdom's Information Commissioner's Office to investigate LinkedIn and other social platforms using user data for artificial intelligence training without explicit consent. The European Union's General Data Protection Regulation regulations mean LinkedIn does not currently use European Union or European Economic Area user data for training. The demand for artificial intelligence training data has led various platforms to repurpose user content, often without easy opt-out options. OpenAI is expanding its advanced voice mode to more ChatGPT users. Initially, it is available for Plus and Team subscribers, with Enterprise and Edu users getting access next week. 
Advanced Voice Mode features a new design, a blue animated sphere. Users will see a pop-up in the ChatGPT app when it becomes available. The rollout includes custom instructions, memory, five new voices, and improved accent recognition. Missing from this update is the video and screen sharing feature shown earlier this year. OpenAI has improved advanced voice modes performance, claiming smoother and faster conversations. The five new voices, inspired by nature, join the existing ones, though the voice named Sky is absent due to a legal issue with Scarlett Johansson. Advanced voice mode is not yet available in the European Union, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein. Up next, we're exploring Quenmax's newest upgrades. Alibaba has released over 100 open source AI models called Quen 2.5, aimed at various sectors such as no automobiles, gaming, and scientific research. These models excel in math and coding, aiming to compete with rivals like Baidu, Huawei, Microsoft, and OpenAI. Alibaba's models can understand prompts and generate text and images, and being open source, they allow global researchers and companies to create AI applications without training their own systems. Since launching its Tongyi Chanwen model last year, Alibaba's open source models have been downloaded 40 million times. The company also upgraded its proprietary flagship model, Quenmax, surpassing competitors like Meta's Llama and OpenAI's GPT-4 in reasoning and language comprehension. Additionally, Alibaba introduced a text-to-video tool based on its AI models. CEO Eddie Wu emphasized the company's significant investment in AI and global infrastructure to boost its cloud services, aiming to attract more customers globally. And now, pivot our discussion towards startup stories. Y Combinator, the renowned startup accelerator known for launching companies like Airbnb and Stripe, is expanding its program to four cohorts annually, up from the traditional two. This means the accelerator will operate year-round, with new spring and fall sessions joining the existing winter and summer cohorts. Each session lasts about 11 weeks and concludes with a demo day where startups pitch to top venture capital firms. Under the leadership of President Gary Tan, who took the helm in early 2022, the size of each cohort will be reduced to around 100 startups, half the size of recent cohorts. This change aims to provide more individualized attention while maintaining the annual total of approximately 500 startups. Despite the smaller batch sizes, the increased frequency of demo days will offer investors more opportunities to engage with startups. YC companies receive a $500,000 investment, including $125,000 for a 7% equity stake and $375,000 on terms set during the next funding round. These changes are expected to enhance the program's responsiveness and maintain its exclusivity, ultimately fostering the creation of more meaningful startups. Ilya Sutskever, co-founder and former chief scientist of OpenAI, recently left the company to start Safe Superintelligence, SSI. While at OpenAI, Sutskever was known for his focus on AI safety, a critical issue given AI's potential risks. SSI aims to create AIs that are both useful and safe, addressing concerns about AI's impact on society, including election interference, privacy abuses, and misinformation. Despite having no product yet, SSI has garnered significant attention and funding, raising $1 billion within three months and achieving a $5 billion valuation. This funding will be used to purchase expensive computing resources and expand its team from the current 10 members. Backed by major investment firms like Sequoia and Andreessen Horowitz, SSI's commitment to safety-first AI development sets it apart from other AI initiatives like Anthropic's Claude, Google's Gemini, Meta's Llama, and X's Grok. 
Suitskever's departure from OpenAI stemmed from differences over AI safety priorities. While OpenAI continues to pursue advanced AI technology, SSI's focused mission on developing safe AI could quickly elevate its standing in the AI industry. Join us as we discuss the technological advancements driving emergency response. Prepared has raised $27 million in a Series B round, led by Andreessen Horowitz to revolutionize emergency calls. The company enables 911 dispatchers to access real-time GPS location, texts, images, and video calls from iPhones with Apple's Emergency SOS Live video feature. Co-founder and CEO Michael Chime emphasizes that Prepared aims to speed up emergency response by reducing the burden of individual calls. Many U.S. 911 centers still struggle with locating callers and processing multimedia, despite the two decades old Next Generation 911 initiative. Initially launched in 2019 to address school shootings, Prepared pivoted to serve 911 call centers. Their web based platform provides running transcripts of calls, uses AI to highlight important details, and even translates texts. Recently, they introduced an AI tool for chatting with Spanish speakers, reducing the need for third-party translators. Chime acknowledges the risks of AI inaccuracies, but argues that AI can process dispatcher calls faster and more accurately. Prepared currently partners with about 1,000 public safety agencies across 49 states and plans to use the new funds for product R&D, market expansion, and hiring. In 2024, European defense technology is set to receive a record-breaking $1 billion in venture capital, marking a five-fold increase since 2018. This surge is driven by rising geopolitical tensions and the aggressive invasion of Ukraine by Russia. According to a DealRoom report, VC investment in defense tech is outpacing other sectors across NATO member states and allies by 25% totaling $3 billion since 2018. Germany, the UK, and France captured the majority of this investment, with Germany alone raising more than the Nordics, Netherlands, Switzerland, and the UK combined. Munich-based Battlefield AI startup Helsing raised $487 million in 2024, leading Munich to top the list of European cities for defense investment, the UK's Silicon Southwest, Bristol, and Paris followed Munich in attracting substantial defense funding. Six of the top 10 European cities for defense tech investment are in the UK VC investment in NATO defense tech. Startups has risen fourfold in the past six years, reaching almost $5.9 billion, with a combined enterprise value of $161 billion for 370 startups. Despite Europe's growth, the U.S. continues to dominate the sector, attracting 83% of VC investment. This year, 66% of the capital for European defense tech companies came from U.S. investors, highlighting a significant increase in transatlantic investment. The report also notes rising interest in dual-use technologies, which have applications in both civil and military sectors, emphasizing their potential to enhance defense capabilities and national infrastructure. Join us as we step into the future of sustainable energy solutions. Marvel Fusion is a startup focused on creating fusion power through inertial confinement fusion, a method involving intense lasers to ignite small fusion reactions. By leveraging cutting-edge laser technology, Marvel aims to generate an effectively limitless, clean energy supply, essential for a world transitioning away from fossil fuels. Unlike traditional approaches that use complex and costly materials, Marvel simplifies the process with mass. Manufacturable targets and solid fuel, made of silicon instead of gold, and hydrogen boron fuel mix. Marvel's upcoming demonstration facility at Colorado State University will utilize two advanced 100-joule lasers 
targeting operational status by early 2027. These lasers will fire in the femtosecond range, bombarding a nanostructured target to initiate fusion reactions. The startup recently raised 62,800,000 euros in a Series B round and received additional funding from the European Innovation Council. Marvel Fusion's approach promises faster and cheaper fusion energy, with the potential for a commercial-scale prototype by 2032 or 2033. If successful, the startup could revolutionize the energy sector with its unique and valuable technology. That's all for today's podcast. Stay tuned for more updates. Dear friends, 